Welcome back to He Can Fix Anything. This Toyota Prius is back with a rough running engine and I thought it's a perfect opportunity to try out this Autel AP200 code reader. But it's not just a code reader. You'll learn more as we go on. Now this is not a sponsored video. I paid full price for this. So I'm gonna give you an unbiased opinion, an unbiased review of this little jewel. I picked up this one through Amazon and was able to get it within a couple of days. You can also get them through your local auto parts store. I paid around 55 bucks for it and auto parts store is gonna be about 20 bucks more. And usually you can get it from Amazon faster. I will leave a link in the description below uh, where you can get this. This particular tool was recommended on a Prius forum. And what's interesting about the Toyota Prius, and by interesting, it's not necessarily a compliment, is that a lot of the cheap, uh, inexpensive plug-in diagnostic tools that can read codes will not read the codes off a of Prius. In fact, the owner of this car took, with the engine light on and flashing, to a, a local auto parts store. They tried to read the codes, said, nope, there's no codes. But in fact, there is. The, the problem is Toyota is a little more difficult to get them. Other cars, there are certain process you can go through of turning the key on and off to be able to read the codes. Uh, with the Prius, you cannot do that. So you need uh, the correct code reader. This one is a really inexpensive way and it doesn't just read the codes, it offers a lot more benefits than that. Just a quick overview of what they advertise. You know, they call this a complete vehicle diagnostic tool and it does link through Bluetooth with your cell phone. This particular one, it is able to determine the diagnostic trouble codes, check engine light indicator, and is able to turn off the light, clear the codes, reset monitors. And this particular one is for 1996 and newer OBD2 compliant vehicles. Pretty much all vehicles from 1996 on are OBD2 compliant. They all use the same type of plug-in. And this access all modules for your selected manufacturer. And one of the downsides of this is for the 55 bucks, you're able to get one manufacturer for free. So in my case, because I have, I tend to work on more Toyotas than others, I'm gonna to select Toyota. If somebody brings me a GM, or if they bring me a Ford or a Honda, that's gonna cost me an additional, I think it's 29 or $39 a year for each one of those additional manufacturers. So basically it uh, connects to the Bluetooth on your phone after you download their app. And they have a few different models. This one has the widest range. And so it can read live data. A lot of those cheap readers cannot do that. They're only gonna read codes and may be able to reset your check engine light, but they do not read live data. Also, it's able to test your O2 monitor. It can work on all makes and models, but like I said before, one is free and you have to pay for every single additional make manufacturer that you add to it. It uh, can read and erase trouble codes on all systems. And in the Prius, they have a brake system, they have an engine system that are separate. And so this one will be able to access all the different various systems. And it can do a throttle match, and that's something that's also important. So you're getting into something that is a two-way uh, communication. It doesn't just allow you to see what's going on, it actually allows you to make changes. And then also it can do your ABS bleed. And anytime you work on these Priuses, if you change the rear brakes, if you change a part, and you need to bleed the system, it's not like the old school where one person steps on the brake pedal, the other person cracks that loose, and it's able to effectively and completely bleed the system. This one, you need this, and this actually is has a function inside the app that will run the actuator pump to bleed the system. It can also generate, this particular one, can generate repair reports, which is important to help you diagnosis and read engine codes for all vehicles, 1996 and newer, and works with iOS or Android. It comes with this quick reference guide to set it up. So the first step in diagnosing this problem is to plug this baby in to your OBD2 connector under the dash and turn the key on. Now on the Toyota Prius, it is right under here, right above where your uh, right leg is. First thing you do is put the key in and then 
press the power button without putting your foot on the brake so the car will not start. You'll see it's powering up. The next step is to open the settings in your phone and go to Bluetooth and you'll identify the code reader there and go ahead and connect to that. Once the connection is made, it will go ahead and automatically open the app and you can start the diagnosis. Let me just make one correction. When you go in to make this purchase uh, in the software, actually the first one is free as I stated before. The second one or third or 50th after that is $21.99 per year, which actually, if you use this even semi-frequently uh, on another make of car, that's a pretty good value, only $22 a year. The next uh, competitor above this one, it's a more expensive unit, they charge $40 per vehicle and you don't get a free vehicle with it. So this is a, a much better deal. Well, something interesting is that once you download the app that they instruct you to download and you go to select a manufacturer, if it is an Asian manufacturer, then it prompts you to go back to the app store and download a different app that's specifically made for Asia. Now they do sell these units that are the plug-in unit that is actually specifically for Asia cars, but the downside of that is then you're stuck with that. And if you have a GM or American made car, you won't be able to use that OBD2 connector with it. So that's why I bought this one because I get access to a lot of different vehicles and I need that flexibility. One note I wanna to add to scan the system you have to put the key in, press this once, and you'll see this is coming on. But for it to connect to the various computer systems, you need to press it a second time. You see the dash light comes on, your AC comes on, starts blowing air, and then it will be able to read the codes. If you don't press it the second time, it will not be able to read the codes. So you'll take it through a few different steps to get to the point where it'll do a diagnostic code read. Most cars, most manufacturers, when you put a code reader in, it will read one system and that is for your engine trouble codes. Like if you have a light because your oil pressure is low or because your air fuel mixture is off because your oxygen sensor is reading out of parameters, those types of things. As you can see here, Toyota looked at 14 different individual systems to read codes. That's why you need a special tool to read these codes because just a cheap one off the shelf, like what you see advertised sometimes, uh, those just won't do it. So as you can see here, we have codes in multiple different systems. The engine and electrical, that's the one I'm really concerned about because that's what should lead us to figuring out why the engine is running so rough. But also you can see EMPS has a code, air conditioning has a code and immobilization has a code. I don't know exactly what those are all about, but I'll look into those also. So once the system scan was complete, codes were read, I was able to go in and generate a report. And that report is a PDF that can be exported and printed out. Uh, also, it shows you uh, the various systems, all 14 systems, and the ones that had basically an all clear and the ones that uh, had codes and how many codes they had. You know, like I said, the main one I'm interested in is this engine ECU, uh, the engine and electrical. Those 15 codes, and not surprised, it's showing engine misfire. There's four different codes. Three of the four cylinders have triggered codes for those individual cylinders misfiring. And then there's also a code related to random misfire, which would make sense. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and look all those codes up. Causes for engine misfire can be a variety of different things. It could be dirty injectors that need to be cleaned. It could be uh, spark plugs that need to be changed. Spark plug wires are less likely but a possibility. Uh, it could be um, an electrical problem other than that. And so I see that the codes are broken up into three different areas. There is current, there is pending and there is historical. And I'll need to look up, I mean, current obviously is something that this has been recent. And historical is these are old codes that haven't been triggered in a while and uh, are just kept in, in that database, but they're not current codes. But pending, I'm not sure what exactly it means by pending. Uh, I haven't ran into that before, so I'll have to look that up. 
So in expectation of this, one of the things I did in just doing some research on what could cause this misfire and the dirty injector was an option. And so I went ahead about, I don't know, three or four days ago, I gave the owner of this car some uh, fuel injector cleaner and put that in the tank and so far it hasn't helped and I would say the car's probably been driven close to 100 miles by now. I'm not sure how long that's going to take to really go through the system. Because it is a hybrid, the engine is off a lot of the time. And so when the engine's off, obviously the injectors are not triggering, they're not uh, being cleaned. And so I'm sure on the drive here is about a 45 mile drive, uh, the engine was on more than it was off. The next thing I'm going to check is going to be the spark plugs. I'll probably go ahead and buy a new set. I don't think they're going to be terribly expensive. And so I'll change the spark plugs and see. Just the rule of uh, mechanics is you go with the simplest thing first. Go for the things that are obvious. Engines need three things to run. They need fuel, they need compression, and they need a spark. And so in this case, I know the compression is good. Um, because it's not using oil, it's not blowing smoke, and so there's no signs there of low compression. And the other option is the fuel, which we put fuel injector cleaner in. It's gonna take time for that to work through the system. And then the other option is the spark. And so the obvious first place to go are the spark plugs. This car has nearly 200,000 miles on it. How many miles does the engine have on it? That I don't know. I may be able to look in the system and see how many hours it's ran. Uh, but that's something that obviously it doesn't have 200,000 miles running on the engine, but it is going to have a significant amount of time running. And so the spark plugs are the obvious second place to look. So after clearing the codes, I decided to take it for a test drive and look at the live data as I was driving to see if that uh, started happening again and where that might be. And so I looked at the section of the data in the engine module that shows uh, the different cylinders, whether they're misfiring or not. And so as I started driving immediately, uh, cylinder number four showed up as having a ton of misfires and the whole car was shaking when it was happening. So some of the other cylinders have had some misfires, but not nearly the quantity that I'm seeing in cylinder number four. Again, that leads to the idea that um, it does it when it's warm, it doesn't do it when it's cold, it does it under a load or partial throttle, but doesn't really do it as much. It can do it when it's idling, but not as commonly. And so it kind of leads to the idea that the spark plugs would be a good direction to go. After I came back, I looked into the diagnostic again in a little different section. And there, when I looked, uh, there was one code that showed up and the only code was for cylinder number four misfire. And I'm able to look in to that and it actually goes through a step-by-step -step diagnosis process to go through. And I think it was item number five is to check or change the spark plugs. But before you get there, it takes you through multiple steps to double check, to verify the diagnosis, uh, to pinpoint the diagnosis, I should say, and all the various different systems and things to check, which is incredibly valuable, especially for someone who doesn't know the car as well as a professional mechanic who needs a little bit of, uh, of guidance in the diagnosis process. That's incredibly powerful and I appreciate that a lot. Well, it is getting late here, it's getting dark. I'm not gonna be able to uh, tear the engine apart tonight to look at the spark plugs. I am gonna make a, a separate video uh, with that on how to change spark plugs in the second generation Toyota Prius. So you'll be looking for that in the future. Um, but I just wanted to give a quick like overview, real hands-on test of this little tool. And uh, so far I really like it. I wish you would be able to read the VIN code, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, but overall, it gives a ton of information. I'm just scratching the surface on it in the use that I'm in the way I'm using it today. But so far, it's more than paid for itself. 55 bucks, you can't pay a mechanic to even open the door for $55. And so it's money well spent. And it really does get a lot of information to you and a lot of tips in how you should go through the diagnosis process. It's pretty um, intuitive. And so it doesn't take someone who is a mechanic or a computer technician or, or a geek to be able to use it. So I, so far I, I don't see any major issues with it and I recommend it.